text this morning we've already read, but we'll be reading it again in your hearing. We'll be St. Mark, the 10th chapter, the 46th through the 52nd verse. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of multitude, many number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, set by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man and saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus, and Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. May the Lord have a blessing in the reading and the hearing of his word. God bless you. May be seated. Truly, we bless the Lord this morning. We thank him for his presence in our midst, and we thank God for his presence in us. We thank the Lord because God has been so good. We are grateful and thankful because had not been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we'd be, who we'd be with, what we'd be doing, but God has been faithful to keep us even in spite of ourselves. And if I might use your word this morning, it would be what to expect when you pray. What to expect when you pray. It doesn't take a, a seasoned or mature Christian any length of time or even a new convert to realize that conversation with God is either verbal out of your mouth or nonverbal out of your heart. But because God is a spirit, and the Bible says, therefore, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we come to know God is a spirit, therefore, our prayer, our conversation, our reflection of him is spirit-driven and not a natural impulse. If we could feel it, we do it. But God has to prompt us and move us and direct us and push us into his presence. Isn't that something? He calls us into a presence, but he has to push us into his presence. What a mighty God we serve. Romans tells us that even our very prayer that we pray, even as a believer, is not only instituted by God, it's orchestrated by God. In other words, God is the beginning and the end of all gets get started in us spiritually or under the anointing. God said, listen, I initiated it. I orchestrated it. And because of you, you are. Amen. I'm grateful that God is not only the driver, the pilot, the co-pilot, and we are passengers. Yeah. Amen. Allowing him to do the driving. God institutes yeah. and corrects as well as directs all that he has purposed for our life. Amen. Romans says this. Likewise, Romans 8, 26 says this. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. He says, listen, you don't even know how to pray except the Holy Ghost give you the inspiration. But the Spirit itself yeah. maketh intercession or intercedes for us with groanings that we cannot utter. We couldn't even open up our mouths to pray. We couldn't even open up our mouths to have a conversation with God if God don't inspire us not only, listen, outwardly, but inwardly. That's the kind of God we serve. 27 verse says this, And he that searches the heart mm -hmm. knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So God is having, on your behalf, a non-stop conversation about his will for your life. Mm. God is talking about you right now because God has purpose for your life before the foundation of the world and you will be sitting here today 
that you would be where you are. God said, I'm still talking about yeah. it. Yeah. I'm still having a conversation to bring about my purpose for your life. The Bible says he makes intercession. Amen. He intercedes for us according to his will. You don't even know the conversation because the Bible says it's utterances that you cannot even utter. You can't mimic it. You can't copy it. God said, I got to speak for you in order to bring it to pass. Amen. Job was minding his business. And God said, have you noticed? Have you seen? Yeah. Hey, have you heard about my servant Job? Yeah. He's a wonderful guy. He's a great guy. He's an honorable man. God was having a conversation on Job's behalf, and he didn't even know him. Mm. Somebody always say, listen, sometimes you feel like, Lord, don't be talking about this so much. I, I don't know what's going to happen next. But God is having a nonstop conversation. That's right. That's right. About you, because yeah. He chose you. That's right. We are commanded by the Word of God to seek after God yeah. uh, for His way as well as His wisdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. God commands us to do so. Isaiah, very familiar. Isaiah fifty-five and six: Seek ye the Lord right. while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked. God gives us instructions as well as wisdom. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him to our, and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Then the eighth verse says, why? God said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways, huh? Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. So therefore I'm commanding you to seek me because I'm having a conversation about you. Yeah. So therefore, if you come, you got to come according to my purpose and my way. Yeah. Yeah. He said, if you're, and listen, if you're seeking me, yeah. it's so that I may, and listen, listen, impart to you the way of God in your life because your thoughts are not about me. Your ways are not about me. So therefore, God said, I got to impute this in you. I got to deposit this in you. That's right. So that you can be to his glory. So you can be to his purpose. If he asks you to seek him, it's for a purpose. And if God asks you to come, amen, unto him and seek him with your whole heart, God said, I got a purpose and a means by which I'm going to bless your life. So he says, wicked man, forsake your, forsake your way. Huh? Let the, unright let, the, uh, let the unrighteous yet be unrighteous. But them that will seek me, he said, forsake the way of the wicked yeah. Yeah. and seek me because my ways yeah. are not your ways yeah. right. and my thoughts yeah. are not your thoughts. Right. And God God commands us to seek him. I find this almost as a, a almost, it almost seems contrary because God commands us to seek him but God has to draw us in order that we seek him. Yes. You put it out there Lord that we ought to seek you but we can't seek you unless you pull us and tuck us and draw us into your plan and into your purpose. You fixed it that before the foundation of the world, you chose us. Before the foundation of the world, you picked us out. So therefore, you picked us out so that we might seek you, but we can't seek you, glory, unless you draw us. God, this is all about God. Yeah, yeah. This is all about his work. Yeah, yeah, mm, we didn't have a hand in this. Right. This is all about God. Yeah, Jesus told his disciples, I chose you. Mm -hmm. He said, you didn't choose me. Mm -hmm. He said, because I chose you, listen, you can't unchoose yourself. Mm -hmm. I chose you. I selected you. Mm -hmm. I picked you up. When nobody would look your way, mm -hmm. I did it. He God said, I chose you. I did it. And because I chose you, I allowed you to seek me. And I allowed you to seek me because I drew you. Glory to God. I pulled you into relationship. You thought you were seeking me because you thought about it. Your ways are not my ways. You couldn't even think about it. But he said, I draw, draw you into my presence so that you would come into a conversation with me. So you would come
come into a communion with me, yeah. a relationship. Yeah. Look what it says here in John 6, 44. No man can come unto me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Jesus said, nobody can even say, yes, Lord, unless my Father draw them. And thank God that if you are a believer today, or if God is tugging on your heartstrings, it's because the Father is drawing you. He's drawing you. What to expect when you pray? What to expect when you pray? I had to pray. I had a friend of mine years ago say to me, he said that he defined prayer as the sincere utterance of the heart. He defined it. He said, Satchel, he said it's the sincere utterance of the heart. And I'd like to take it one step further and say that prayer is sincere utterance as it is a conversation with God. Conversation. It's an opportunity for God to commune with me and me commune with him. Therefore, we're having a conversation. Amen. Whether I'm speaking audibly or whether I'm communing in my spirit, God is up to something when he speaks. God is up to something when he allows you to hear the conversation. God allows you to, listen, listen, respond to the yay as well as the nay. Right. Thank God for the conversation. Thank God that we yet hear him in our spiritual ear. Thank God that we yet are inspired by what God says. God is having a conversation. He's uttering something right now because it is speaking to my spirit. He's uttering something right now because it is directing my ways. It's allowing me to say, mm, I need to consider this because God spoke it. I need to listen because God said something. Don't you often hear something in the atmosphere? You know, it's interesting when God allows you to feel like there's something about to happen, there's an expectation where in my spirit, I sense God is speaking a word. Yeah. Thank God for his word to us. Look at our text here. Very interesting text. Very familiar. But the Bible says here, it said, and they came to Jericho and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, set by the highway side of Maine. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus was the son of Timaeus. He was one of the two blind beggars that, uh, out of Jericho, out of Mark 10 and 46 and Matthew 20 and 30. His blindness was miraculously cured on the ground of his faith. God healed him. Several things about God. There's several things about God that you have to put in perspective when you think about how God operates. He supplies as well as fulfills the need. God supplies the need and he fulfills the need. At the same time, he impacts you with the need and then he fills it. I don't understand how he does it, but God does it. Oftentimes we hear somebody say, God will meet you at the point of your need. Yeah. What that actually says is that God will meet you at the point of your difficulty. Mm -hmm. Whatever your difficulty is, God will meet it. Mm -hmm. But understand this, the difficulty in your life, God will allow it. Mm -hmm. It's a need that God said, I'm releasing this in your life so that you will need me. Glory! God, so that you will trust me. Yeah. I'm allowing it in your life. You know when the Apostle Paul, uh, listen, was encouraged by the church at the rim, and he said to them, he said, listen, I went before the Lord three times, and I asked God to move this thing, because God allowed a difficulty in his life that he was struggling with. Amen. There's a struggle. Whatever you're going through, God allowed the difficulty so that he could create the need so that you would be needy and need him. Glory! Mm. You would need him. Mm. Mm. This way 
Well, you look back and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know how I'd make it. God brought me out. I needed it. I needed God to fix it. And God fixed it. The Apostle Paul said, I went through it three times. Have you ever gone to the Lord more than three times about a difficulty in your life? And said, Lord, we've been talking about this thing for a minute. And you still haven't done anything. And then God comes back with, my grace is sufficient for thee. Because my strength is made perfect in your weakness or in your need. What you needed, I gave you. And because you got it, understand this, I'm strengthening you in the midst of it so that you and I can take you to have a conversation. Mm. He said, listen, this is why I really so Paul said, listen, now I've learned one thing now. I thought about three times about it, and God came back and told me this, saying, listen, that when I'm weak, yeah. ooh, glory, then am I strong. Yeah. I recognize that God is not just somebody to put on a shelf. I remember that God is as active in my highs as he is in my lows. Yeah. So God said, listen, I created the difficulty so that you would need me. Woo. Wow, wow. So that you would need me. Mm. So God met me at the point of my difficulty. Yes. And told me, listen, this way we can keep a conversation. Mm -hmm. This way we can keep the line clear. I remember years ago they told me, keep the line clear. Don't let nothing get between you and God. God's got enough power and enough anointing yes, yes. to keep you at a place yes. of needing because when he listen, he told Paul, he said, listen, so you wouldn't get buffeted. I mean, so you wouldn't get big headed, Paul. I did this. So that you would recognize that it's about me and not about you. Glory, 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 glory. God said, listen, I created the need so that you would need me. Listen, Psalmist said this, Psalms 37 and 4, delight thyself yes. Yes. in the Lord. Yes, sir. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. The desire of your heart is your need. Yes. Whatever you desire in your heart is what you need it for. Glory to God. He said, I gave you the need so that you would need me. Therefore, you delight glory in me. Yeah. Mm. That's why when Abraham believed God and had nothing to believe in other than the word of God, God said, I like you. <laughs> Abraham was a of God because he recognized that if it had not been for God, if God had not stepped in, it would have been impossible. And God said, I created the need mm -hmm. so that you would need me. Oh God, I thank you. Delight thyself all from the Lord and give him, and he will give you the desires of your heart. When we celebrate God, yes. he celebrates his will for us and fulfills, listen to this now, when we celebrate God, he celebrates his will for us and fulfills the need. That's why the Bible says in everything what? Give thanks. Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So I'm able to thank God in my highs as well as in my lows because God has created a need for me to need him. Woo, Lord. What to expect when you pray? Prayer is conversation. Prayer is a dialogue between you and God. Oh, God. Sometimes you don't even have your mouth open and you and God are having a good time in conversation. Sometimes you just haven't said a thing and God is speaking volumes in your spirit. Yes. That's why God, that's why the, uh, uh, Eli told Samuel, he said, listen, listen, even though God ain't speaking to me anymore, Samuel, he said, just if you hear anything like that again, just say something. Speak, Lord. Thy servant here. Yes. Just say that. He said, because he recognized one thing, that God created the need for Samuel to hear. Therefore, Samuel said, I need to hear what God says. So Eli said, listen, just go there and wait. Ah! And God will speak again. Just go there, because if God is speaking, it's not just to open his mouth. It's not just to say idle words, but when God speaks, it's for your purpose. It's for your destiny. Amen. It's for value and purpose in your life. 
In order, just give you a few things here. In order to have prayer or a conversation with God, you must be noticed to be heard. Bartimaeus was blind. He couldn't see Jesus, but he heard about it. Therefore, he hollered. The Bible says he hollered so much that the disciples said, listen, 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 shut him up. <laughs> Quiet him down. But he got noticed. And one thing I learned about God, God, when God notices you, you have been heard. And when you've been heard, then God said, listen, now I can have a conversation and hear you. So your objective that when you pray, when you see God, is say, Lord, here I am. Lord, notice me. Raise your hand up and tell him, say, Lord, notice me. Because God said, listen, if you go to great lunch to be noticed, I'll hear what you got to say. If it means something to you, you'll keep knocking, glory, until the door is open. Bartimaeus was blind. Bartimaeus was in the midst of a crowd. Bartimaeus had all kinds of listen, distractions and everything else. He was by the wayside begging. Now understand this, Jericho was a mean place. And yet he hollered out, Jesus, thou son of David, basically notice me. Listen, if it's bad enough for you to want, it ought to be bad enough for you to ask for. If it's bad enough for you to want, you ought to beg for it, ask for it, scratch for it, whatever it is. God, I stand in need of what you have. God, I stand in need of what you, listen, can offer me if you hear me. So he got noticed because the disciples said, shut him up. But the Bible says that Jesus heard him. Mm -hmm. He heard him enough to be noticed. And God sees where you are. He sees your situation. And if he's noticed you, expect to be heard. Mm -hmm. Because see, you can't continue to call on him and he not answer. Mm. You can't continually seek him and he not answer. Because God said, if I notice you, it's because I heard you. And now that I heard you, I want to hear what you got to say. Thank you. Woo, glory. I'm going to seek you. See, listen, what to expect? First off, expect God to notice you. Mm -hmm. And if God notices you, expect to be heard. Yeah, that's right. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Mm -hmm. God don't call you to himself. If he's drawing you to himself and pushing you into a conversation and relationship, it's because God wants to hear what you have to say. Woo, glory. God, Bartimaeus, listen, met the criteria. God noticed him and he was heard. Amen. God noticed him. Why? Even in spite of the crowd, God sees you in the midst of confusion. God sees you in the midst of darkness. David said in the 139th Psalm, he said, if I make my bed in hell, he said, Lord, you're there. If I go to the heavens, God, you're there. He said, you know my down sittings and my uprisings. Oh, glory. You know my thoughts are far off. He said, God, you notice me. So I know you heard me. Oh, glory. You speak to me. You're having a conversation about me because you notice me. Look at this backdrop text here. He said that Jesus stood still. Glory. The man made such a, a, a ruckus, made such noise that Jesus stood still in his tracks. He stood still in his tracks. The disciples tried to shut him up, but Bartimaeus continued to holler and God noticed him, he heard him, and he stopped in his tracks. So there's nobody that can come before the Lord in the day of judgment and say, God didn't hear him. If you made a genuine effort wow. to be heard. If a blind man being quieted in the midst of a multitude can get the Lord to stand still, God hears you. God hears you. He noticed him, he heard him, and the Bible says here, Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called, 
And they called, and the blind man said to them, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen. The same ones that didn't want him to hear or be noted are the same ones that said, Jesus is calling, you better go and, he got, and see what he got to say. Mm. The same ones that were in his way, cried, listen, were now showing him the way. Because they respected Jesus more than they respected the blind man. And when Jesus said, tell him to come here, they did nothing likewise but say, come here. He recognized that if he was calling the blind man, he better get the blind man to Jesus. Mm. Christ stopped in his tracks. Bartimaeus cried from a distance. Oh God, I love this text because he was crying and weeping and praying and asking and God heard him. He cried, he listened, he was crying from a distance and God heard him. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. Now he's face to face and the Lord is responding to his need. So understand this now. God has a purpose and a plan because he examines the heart. And Bartimaeus was sincere about meeting the Lord. He was sincere about getting his need met. If you meet it with God, God means it with you. I think one of the greatest prayers you can pray is help yes. and mean it. Amen. And God will hear your cry. Now he went from being at a distance to making it personal face to face in the presence of the king, in the presence of God. The Bible says this now, and when thou prayest, or when you have a conversation with God, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, uh, listen, ah, oh, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Rarely I say unto you, they have their reward. Matthew 6 and 5. Then 6 and 6 says this, Matthew, but thou when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which seeth in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And listen, listen, Bartimaeus went from Yemen to having a private conversation with Jesus because he heard him. He heard him. He heard him. So he got noticed. He got heard. And now the Lord was hearing him. Whoa, Lord. What to expect when I call on him? What to expect when I pray? I expect to be noticed. I expect to be heard. I expect God to hear me. Ooh, glory. Because when he hears me, it's personal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he hears me, it's personal. That's why, I, uh, listen, Eli told Samuel, he said, if you hear it again, mm -hmm. he said, say, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. So he went from a distance, Bartimaeus, to being personal and face to face with God, and now the Lord hears him. Yeah. Ooh, glory. He got an audience. He got a, listen, listen. He got God's attention because God noticed his cry. He noticed his plea. He noticed his situation. The Bible says, and hey, listen, in Psalms 34 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, uh -huh, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. God said, I will meet you at the point of your difficulty. If you call on me. Whatever your difficulty is, God said, all you got to do is call on me. Because if I notice you, I'll hear you. And if I notice you, I'll respond to your need. What a mighty God we serve. Lord, 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 Lord. Come boldly before him. Make yourself known. Be at a place that God hears as well as responds to your need. Look at the text here. And he casting away his garment, amen, and rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith, that made thee whole. 
and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Bartimaeus got noticed, he got heard, he got help, and listen, listen, and he got healed. Well, so listen, you had a conversation such that we started at a distance and then it became personal. And God said, I changed your life because you called on me. I changed your life because you trusted me. When the smoke clears, when all the drama passes, understand this. God said, listen, I want a conversation. All you had to do was open your mouth and God would have heard you. Yes, yes. All you had to do was cry from the, listen, listen, from the pit of your spirit. And God said, I'll hear you. Because if I notice you, I heard you. And if I heard you, oh God, I'll help you. And if I help you, I'll heal you. I'll fix it for you. Because you put your trust in me. Bartimaeus was not the same in him. You don't read anymore about Bartimaeus. But the Lord healed him, changed his life, fixed it. We always talk about Jesus being a fixer and a way maker. But he won't be that if you don't call on him. He won't be that if you don't notice him. You gotta make yourself known. Lord, here I am. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Here I am, God. Help me in my situation. God, meet me at the point of my difficulty. You know what my difficulty is? God, meet me there. Oh, God, meet me there. And God said, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you're not, I'll open. If you ask, it shall be given. All you got to do is call on me. Trust me for what you don't see. Trust me for the impossible. We got to come boldly before the Lord. Make ourselves known before God, even as a believer. I got to continually seek him. I got to continually trust him for the impossible. I got to continually ask, knock, and seek. Why? Because God has a plan for my destiny. God has a purpose for my life. Hebrews 4 15 says this, for we are not, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity or our difficulties. Mm -hmm. God meets you at your infirmity. God meets you at your difficulty. You say, my life is all messed up. Understand this. Here's a word for your difficulty. God will meet you at your difficulty when you call on him. Look what it says here. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore mm, come boldly. Now this is after God hears us because he's speaking to believers. He's not talking to somebody out on the fringes. He's saying to us who already believe, he said, come on then unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy, find grace to help in the time of need or in the time of difficulty. He said, come on then. The devil wants you to shy away when you're in difficulty. But God says when you're dealing with difficulty, he said, come on then. Because I created the need. Therefore, you can trust me for the results. Mark 10, 47 says this. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, mm, have mercy on me. What to expect when you pray? Expect to be noticed. Expect to be heard. Expect to be helped. And expect to be healed. When you call on him out of a sincere heart as well as attitude. But God says, I'm here for you because I have a word for you in the midst of your difficulty. So maybe you're going through something, you're watching this broadcast, or maybe you're going through something. God said, that's where I want to meet you. I want to meet you at your difficulty. I want to meet you at your extreme. I want to meet you at the area of your life that you struggle with most. He said, I want to meet you at your difficulty because I created the need so that you would need me. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus Christ this morning, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, that thou shalt confess 
with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, beloved, you confess what you believe. The writer here is saying to us that we can trust him for everything and anything because that's the kind of God we serve. St. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We trust God for our difficulties. And God says, I got a word for your difficulty. Call on me. Trust me for results. Ask me to come into your life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, any and everybody who may be dealing with difficulty and feel like they are at their end, have no other hope. God, let them know right now that you are the hope they need and that the need that they have is so that they might need you. So Father, I say to them right now, God, speak to them, anointing fall fresh, if you don't know the Lord, say, Lord, come into my life. Come into my life. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Save me right now, even as I come to you with my difficulties. God, let me trust you as Savior and Lord of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we thank you for all that pray that prayer and all that are yet believing you to change their life because they need a conversation. They need communion. They need you, Lord, 